Early in 2005, at the start of the new school year, as network administrator, I was behind in getting lab and library computers set up. With more equipment ordered and no increase in staff, it was understood it would take some time into fall to be completely up and running. Everything was going wrong. Nothing worked right. My frustration and irritability rose in proportion. The problems requiring troubleshooting and analysis tripled. It seemed I had acquired the opposite of the Midas touch, as all efforts seemed mere fodder for Murphy's Law. And it got worse. Even things that could not possibly go wrong started to. Every action seemed to require hours and hours of recovery time to fix the new problem just created from the old one. And I couldn't find things. I would get to work without my cell phone, the next day my briefcase, the following day the pager, the day after that the phone and the briefcase. There was not a day that went by that I wasn't screaming at myself in the car on the way to work about what a moron I was. There was a term for it that I know now is called Lyme Rage, and it was used often as a form of self-punishment. On July 1st, 2006, I had to resign from my job as network administrator for the school district I had worked at for the previous 10 years. <clears throat> no goodbyes, farewells for a job well done, nothing. No response as to why. I submitted the letter of resignation worked out my last few days to leave one last time and never return. Perhaps we all knew that I could no longer fulfill the role. It was a big job with enormous responsibilities. When I took the position in 1996, I made a promise to myself, never leave this job unless they throw you out on your can. It was a promise I could not keep. The specter of incompetence had overcome, and I had no idea why. Relocating to Florida became a fixation. Though I was wearing wool socks year-round now, my feet felt like I was standing in a pail of ice water. The fight-or-flight syndrome had manifested itself permanently now, <clears throat> in the feelings of suffocation, not getting enough air, breathing irregularly, all gave the sense that one was drowning. An overpowering feeling of needing to start over, of changing my identity, of shedding one's skin or metamorphosizing, had begun around 2002. I researched Belize and de developed an escape plan. I got half of the way there. In researching the options, I followed up on a link to a job that my oldest daughter pointed out. Her comment was something to the effect of, this might be what you're looking for. Caretaker for a bamboo farm for a nudist family in central Florida. The terms were 20 hours per week in exchange for free rent living on the farm and must be at least comfortable with the nudity part if not willing to participate. I flew down Memorial Day weekend to try out for the position, found it a match, and July 1st was set as the first day. The physical labor, the lack of complexity, being outdoors in the warm Florida sun, and having just one thing to do at a time, yes, multitasking skills were not required. All made the decision an overwhelming yes. I found a psychiatrist in Leesburg, Florida, who would take me on. More benzos, Cymbalta, Adderall. However, there were sublime moments of rapture in the garden on the bamboo farm. Made new friends? This new life had begun. This went well for the next eight months, until that one morning where I could no longer lift up a mug of coffee to my lips because of extreme pain and weakness in my arms. The day before, I was rolling 300-pound potted plants, but that morning, widespread pain had gripped me, especially in the arm muscles, joints, and tendons. The pain was excruciating, sometimes throbbing, sometimes radiating, sometimes shooting. I felt like I was being electrocuted, 
It was a real struggle getting through that four-hour shift, and I immediately called a general practitioner. Appointment set for two days later, and it crossed my mind, could this be Lyme? The doctor seemed genuinely puzzled and concerned with my symptoms and ordered a widespread set of lab tests to cover a lot of possibilities. It occurred to me that we must rule out Lyme and so ordered that test as well. Days later, all tests were negative, but for a slight indication of possible marker for rheumatoid arthritis. His recommendation was to see yet another specialist, this time a rheumatologist. And so for the first Lyme test in 2008, came back as, or was misdiagnosed as, negative.